So I want to talk about this incredible vitamin K2, okay? I have other videos on this, but this is some additional data. Um, now, vitamin K1 has everything to do with coagulating proteins. It's basically binding proteins and helping forming clots, okay? Stopping bleeding. It's very, very important. It's also involved in bone formation and uh, it's recycled, okay? So your body um, usually is not very deficient in vitamin K1. It's in leafy greens. K2, on the other hand, is very different. A lot of people are deficient in it. It's not recycled very readily. Um, and it basically binds calcium in the bone. And it also helps transport calcium out of the soft tissues. Uh, so it takes calcium from the places it shouldn't be, and it puts it in the place that it should be. But it's also involved in your metabolism, as far as the mitochondria, in turning that food into energy. So let's say, for example, um, you exercise and you last a certain time period. You kind of like run out of gas or you don't have the endurance. K2 can help you go longer. It can increase your cardiac outpoint. I've noticed this when I, um, I have this huge hill at my house. It's gigantic, right? And for quite a long time, I could only make it halfway up. Started taking K2. And I've also taken other things like B1 from some other supplements I have. But vitamin K2, it's just dramatic. It just allows me to go right up without any stops. It just gives me more uh, endurance and more uh, sustained strength. So it's quite remarkable. But it all has to do with what's happening at the cellular level inside the mitochondria. There's several different uh, types of vitamin K2. MK versions, you have MK2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So you have a lot of different versions of K2. But the ones you can get in supplement form are MK4 and MK7. Um, the one that I recommend is MK7 because it's natural, it's not synthetic. But vitamin K2 originates from bacteria, okay, in animals and humans. We could actually make a little bit of it. Um, but in grass-fed animal products, in liver, uh, egg yolks, uh, meats, cheese, certain cheeses, um, I said liver already, and also fermented foods. There's a product called NATO, which is a fermented soybean. Uh, I think they use it in Japan. That has vitamin K2. Now, who would benefit from vitamin K2? Those people who have a history of taking antacids, usually always deficient in K2. Uh, if you had a history of taking a lot of antibiotics, you're going to have a deficiency in K2 as well. Or you're on statins. Um, or you have GI problems, any type of diverticulitis or irritable bowel syndrome or IBS or Crohn's, uh, any type of scar tissue. This is a fat-soluble vitamin. So we need a good digestive system to absorb it. If you're taking vitamin D3, you need to be taking K2, because they both work together. If you take just vitamin D3 without K2, potentially you could increase your calcium too high in the tissues because we want the K2 to pull out that calcium excess. If you're taking calcium, you need to take K2 because K2 tells the calcium where to go. If you're menopausal, okay, um, you need K2. Why? To actually prevent bone loss. Okay, heart problems, cardiovascular weaknesses. The main thing about K2 is it actually prevents calcification through the arteries, through the blood vessels, and the soft tissues. So it can work to help keep the arteries free of calcium deposits. Uh, and also if you're pregnant, you need K2, very, very important. Also, if you have arthritis, K2 can help you or inflammation it can help you. All right, thanks for watching. Hey guys, real quick, I have a new healthy keto eating plan for you. Just go to drberg.com. It's right on the front page. I put a link down below. Download it, it's free. Check it out.